So this talk is going to be about uh, memory pass-through for virtual machines. Uh, and uh, it came from this project that uh, we've, we've been working on is basically to move some of the work from container environment to virtual machines. So I'll begin with the very brief explanation of uh, how ex uh, extended uh, page table works or SLED or um, uh, stage two page table. It looks like uh, every single vendor decided like their own name for this and uh, uh, but anyway, so uh, when we translate a virtual address, we, uh, we, we look up in TLB and uh, if we hit, we get a physical address. So, and that's in virtual machine. And uh, so the translation, if we hit TLB, is just exactly the same as if um, uh, we run natively. But uh, if you have to go through the second level uh, page table for, uh, through two-dimensional paging, as we call it in Linux kernel, uh, then uh, the picture is a little more complicated because um, we uh, can have a uh, page table miss both in uh, the uh, virtual machine page table and also in the second level uh, page table. So in the second level page table in SLED, uh, the, the miss usually happens maybe like soon after boot when we first touch the memory if that uh, if the virtual machine memory wasn't backed by uh, like pre-allocated physical pages uh, but it also can happen because of the ballooning or for some other reasons so what uh, happens is that um, the translation cost is actually not the summation of these two page tables it's actually more because the page to, uh, the guest page table also sits in the uh, physical uh, address space, in the guest physical address space, and its page table levels have to be translated um, to, to the host physical address space. So the actual number of loads to do a uh, work of these two page tables is actually equals to n times m plus n plus m, which is uh, where n and m are the sizes of those page tables. So if it's uh, level four page tables in both cases, then it's N and M are both four. But uh, we now also have uh, five level page tables, so they could be four, five, or they could be, can be both fives and so, and so on. So it's uh, somewhat more expensive. Uh, so this uh, slide uh, shows basically the summary of uh, various combinations of uh, page sizes and also uh, how many loads is needed to perform the translation when we work the page tables. So as, as you can see with 4 and 4K, it's uh, 24 loads for the four level page table. Uh, so 4 and 4K is, like, is probably not something that is uh, frequently used. It's more likely that the guest memory is backed at least by the transparent huge pages. So in that case, the host has two megabyte and uh, guest has 4K. So in that case, it's 19 translation. Um, and if, if it's uh, huge TLB pages and uh, backed by a gigabyte, then um, we are down to 11 translations. Actually, 14 translations for the 4K host. So when we started working on this project, we started thinking about how can we optimize it. And we um, uh, came with the several uh, ideas to look into. And um, uh, so the first one is that the memory management is basically duplicated uh, in the virtualized environment. So we have to look through the, uh, we allocate pages in the guest, we search the free list, we, I mean, take the pages for the free list, we uh, allocate it, we fold it, we zero it, but then we can, um, we might repeat the same thing on the host as well, if that page wasn't available, like the physical pages weren't available. So we might zero twice. Um, we also have the double footprint because the memory management has overhead because of the struct pages and some other metadata. So we have the host uh, uh, overhead and then we have guest overhead. 
Uh, then we have this uh, access cost, which uh, I just talked about, which uh, basically the extra translation going to the slat page tables, uh, which uh, uh, which can add up to uh, 29 loads. Uh, and, and then there is also uh, like a, a opportunity for the optimization compared to the cont cont uh, containers is the boot performance that uh, guest takes time to, to boot and container is like is usually just readily available. So we figured that uh, we could try to do something like a memory pass through basically that uh, assume that the guest memory is always available. So guest never misses a page and uh, we provide guest with one gigabyte pages. So we treat the physical uh, address space of the guest as a virtual address space. And all the translation happen on the ha on the host, so like misses and everything happen on, on the host. So with, the, with providing guests with the gigabyte pages on the guest side, we um, solve the problem of, um, of, of the sled, so it's uh, quicker, uh, the translations. But uh, we also do not waste more memory because the, usually what is associated with one gigabyte pages the, is the fragmentation. Is that uh, uh, you like allocate the full gigabyte page and you need to use the whole page. But if you do that in, in the guest and only subset of that page is actually used on the host, is actually allocated on the host, then um, we do not have this problem of uh, wasted memory. So as you can see, the translation becomes somewhat simpler. So we've done some uh, performance measurements as well uh, to see uh, how the, uh, the the translation costs for the uh, heat and heat within the uh, page table and then page fault is basically when we have to go through the uh, allocating a new page of, uh, in, into the, uh, and insert it into the page table. Uh, so. As you can see, uh, the, the first three columns is the bare metal. It's uh, four kilobyte, two megabyte, and one gigabyte pages. And uh, what a heat in the uh, page table corresponds to. So uh, a heat uh, for four kilobyte pages, but the miss in TLB, of course, is uh, like with our measurements was uh, 465 nanoseconds. For one gigabyte, is, it was 225 nanoseconds because there are fewer page table levels to load. But uh, if we use the slat, which is uh, the second, um, uh, which is uh, the, the next three columns, uh, so if we use uh, slat uh, uh, backed by 4K pages on the host, but with one gigabyte pages in the guest, uh, we we get about the same performance as the 4K, so it's it was 465 nanoseconds and then it becomes four, uh, 493 uh, nanoseconds for the one gigabyte. Uh, page fault performance is also about the same because we do not zero that gigabyte page in the guest. We um, expect host to zero the memory when it faults it, like when uh, once we start using that gigabyte page and. Uh, touch regions within that gigabyte page, so when the pages are faulted on the host, they are zeroed on demand as well. So uh, to achieve that, we actually wrote a new driver called uh, memctl. And uh, so this memctl is basically uh, a driver that enlightens host about uh, how guest wants its memory to be backed. Um, so memctl uh, sends commands from the guest to the host. So there is like a, uh, a, an agent in the VMM and also a driver in the guest. So the driver in the guest um, accepts the physical range, uh, the guest physical range, uh, and the command. And then uh, sends it to the host and synchronously uh, executes that command. And the commands that we pass include uh, m, m, uh, m map, m and map, m lock, m and lock, m device, m protect, and uh, uh, PRCTL, which allows us to set uh, the name uh, for for a given part of the uh, of the guest physical range. 
so that it's there is like a better observability from the host side how a particular uh, region of the guest memory is actually used. So, for example, if um, guest uh, allocated a particular region uh, of its memory for the uh, TCM alloc or something, then uh, that's actually visible from the host side. So this is syn uh, synchronous, meaning that uh, when vCPU performs this uh, mem control uh, call, it uh, performs VM exits, and then it waits until that uh, command is finished, and then it returns to the caller. So we rely on this uh, KVM cap sync MMU uh, property, which basically synchronizes the uh, guest uh, 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 synchronizes on the host uh, the uh, mapping between um, uh, uh, what VMM allocates and uh, how that memory is mapped to the SLED table. So th th this is basically the diagram that shows uh, what I've described. Uh, we have um, a user process which uh, can uh, perform the MEM control commands and then, uh, so, so uh, for now, we use huge TLB to get the one gigabyte pages in the guest. We've uh, modified that huge TLB to not zero those pages, but uh, instead rely on mem control command to, to do m advice do not need uh, prior to providing the gigabyte pages to the uh, user app. So that, that way, those gigabyte pages are very quickly available. There is no... Um, time spent uh, zeroing the full gigabyte. Uh, and then we uh, use the needed commands that like the same as like uh, an allocator would use uh, M advice and protect and so on. So, so uh, this is the end of my slides. I wanted to go very quickly through the slides, but then um, I actually have several topics for discussions and um, I have several questions um, uh, so uh, we have 15 minutes, that's good. Uh, so uh, I'd like to find the, uh, the other use cases for uh, MEMCTL. Uh, I'd like to figure out what would be the upstreaming path for the MEMCTL and, um, and basically answer any other questions that um, there are, might be. Yes. Is there another mic? Uh, thank you. Uh, so my question is, uh, what uh, when this is enabled, uh, whether the second level page table is still enabled in the guest in general? Yes, the second level page table is enabled, but uh, we use um, uh, gigabyte pages in the guest and two or four k pages, two, two megabyte of four k pages on the host, and that's why the translation itself is fast since there is like uh, less working. So, if you go back to this page and look what it is uh, for one gigabyte, two megabyte, that's uh, eleven loads to do the translation. But uh, normally, to to achieve this uh, eleven uh, loads we would use gigabyte pages on the host, and that might uh, waste memory, considering that the workload that we are trying to um, move into the virtualized environment has been previously been running in the containers, and uh, it needs to be dynamic. It shouldn't be wasting memory on the host. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I was wondering, because you know, before the, uh, the two-level page table exists, we have KVM have a shadow paging, and uh, basically, uh, initially, uh, what it does is uh, it tries to squash the guest page table along with the host page table into a shadow page table. And uh, that can also avoid uh, two-level walking. Uh, basically, it reduces uh, o and dub double n minus m to o n uh, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so my understanding is that uh, the problem with that was that uh, to keep them synchronous, and it was just expensive to update those page tables in the guest and on the host every time you update the page table. And that's why those hardware optimizations were added. So, 
So what I recall is that there were some para-virtualized approaches, and I mean this is all para-virtualized, where you would actually like to guess would tell the hypervisor what it updates so you don't have to monitor guest memory for changes in, in the page table layout. So you would just like send it para-virtualized to the hypervisor. Uh, so yes, this uh, part of virtualization because uh, we enlighten a host about uh, the guest memory. Uh, but uh, it's um, the guest itself tells host how it wants its memory to be back. So we 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 we, we use two things here. First, we uh, enable guest to tell host that look, this memory is something that I don't access uh, very frequently. So please back it by 4K pages instead of two meg pages. Uh, second, it's just an example, or like unlock this range of memory, or do something else. Like basically, we allow guest to manipulate um, uh, the, the way its physical memory is backed on the host. The second thing that uh, we are doing is that we are treating guest physical memory as virtual memory. So we do not assume that all of the physical memory is actually backed by physical pages. And, and that enables us to use those gigabyte pages in the guest and not to waste memory. And uh, using the gigabyte pages in the guest also allows us to do the quicker translations. So what is the guest perception of this odd thing? Like, do, do you have a one gig folio that you stick in the VMA to get a one gig so page? Or today, what? today we use a huge TLB FS with the, uh, to, to get the gigabyte pages in the guest. Uh, I want us to start using something called single owner memory, which I'll talk about tomorrow, uh, but uh, th that's a different topic. But uh, yeah, so we used DEX initially, uh, then we switched to huge TLBFS for like uh, various reasons. Th 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 uh, so emulated PMM and DEX worked fine, but uh, th there were some particular problems with the, uh, associated with the VMM that we've been using for this project. and. Um, so we decided to use a uh, huge TLBFS, which uh, had like fewer problems. But uh, yeah, so basically, uh, it, we, we don't really care where the gigabyte pages are coming from. But uh, but I mean, like, what's what's the whole experience in the guest? Like, like, what if I do GUP on this one gig page and I target something that that hasn't actually been mapped in the hypervisor? What what happens? So. Uh, the, the same thing as what would happen if you do GUP on a huge TLB page today. You, you get the physical, you get the page back. You, you get the page but on the But there's host no memory table. there, you said. So, so that page gets faulted, like the, the, that 4K page or 2Mac page. So we, we allocate one gigabyte. We, we tell host okay. to back that gigabyte uh, by, like, so we do have advice telling, like, uh, this gigabyte should be backed by 4K or 2Mac pages. And then when we touch that region, when we start reading and writing uh, to that region, that's when uh, host actually folds that memory and we get a, a page, like a, a 4K or 2 meg page within so that one gigabyte uh, page. So, so is the actual optimization that you're doing then essentially that you don't zero out the huge TLB page in the guest? Because if you would be zeroing it out, you would be touching we, everything and... That's that correct. We do not zero that, yes. We do have advice don't need before providing the uh, one gigabyte pages to to the clients. Okay. So I wonder, like, if you need all of the uh, fully blown feature set here of, that could be achieved using whatever every free page reporting, uh, and then you only like you are aware if you're using free page reporting and you reported it using whatever balloon that the next time you touch it, it will get lazily allocated on demand. So you can just use a like gigabyte page, and if you don't zero it out, it will still be freed in hypervisor. I mean, I get that you have like these other optimizations telling like, do I want to use 4K, two megabyte, one gig? But I think this is a separate, separate set of optimizations, if I'm not wrong. Like the, the core optimization that I consider valuable is that you don't do the double zeroing, and that's why when you have like a gigabyte page in your guest, you're not actually like allocating all of that memory in your hypervisor. Immediately. Uh, th that's right. We do not allocate all of that me memory immediately. Uh, that's uh, the core optimization. Uh, and also then we re return that uh, gigabyte page to the guest. We also do uh, M advice don't need on the host side before returning it. So that uh, that memory can be returned immediately back to the host. Okay, like free page reporting where the guest would report that memory is no unused and the uh, hypervisor mm -hmm. would 
am advised don't need or whatsoever. Yes, memory. yes, yes. So yeah, I think it m maybe it could be somehow done using existing mechanisms, like somehow mangling that into the balloon. But I only like the, the optimization for for the memory part, not everything else that you you covered. So uh, yeah, so um, memory ballooning, I guess, uh, could uh, provide some of this. I'm not sure that memory ballooning allows to send some other commands such no, as... No, no, that, uh, that, 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 that doesn't work. No. Yeah, like, for example, uh, advising the size of the page on the host, like if, if we want 4K or two Mac pages, it, we don't have this uh, set VMA uh, ability, like to set the name, for example, for, for a given region and uh, other things. So memory ballooning does not give, give us everything. Yeah, like as I said, like uh, I think the most valuable one is the lazy allocation that mm -hmm. you want to have. Mm -hmm. and, but the other ones, I agree that you would need some other interface, and I, I'm not sure how controversial that would be. <laughs> I cannot tell. But is it really like it, you said it was huge TLBFS, but it's not really huge TLBFS. Kind of like it's got this extra stuff on top of it, where it's doing hyper calls to get rid of. You know, deallocate and allocate. So there, there is page clear call in kernel, in, uh, and then there is like a page clear for the one gigabyte pages, a gigantic. I don't remember. It's called something yeah. like a gigantic page clear, or something like that. So in, inside that call, we added the uh, call to mem control to do the mem advice don't need. So the mem control sends the. Uh, so instead of doing the B zero for like the, or mem set for the whole range, and. Uh, Therefore, faulting all the pages on the host, zeroing all the pages twice, actually once on the host and once in the guest, we we simply tell on the host remove everything for this uh, uh, physical range in the guest, and then lazily uh, allocate it when when guest starts using that. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the talk that we had yesterday about kind of similar. You know, not 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 the same purpose, but the same kind of abuse of huge TLBFS to add new functionality and things. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, cloud hypervisor said that they are okay to take the mem control agent part uh, prior Linux. So my problem is like uh, who should take the like uh, how to upstream this and what kind of security implication uh, we might have and um, like um, where the decision for this kind of agent uh, sh should take place in what uh, setting so uh, should uh, should it be at the uh, VMM should it be uh, Discussed on LKML, so what, what, like, what, what would be the right path to upstream this kind of feature? Uh, is there a microphone? Uh, what is that? So, so uh, the changes to the huge TLBFS, I do not propose any changes to huge TLBFS at the moment because th this is just a temporary solution. It's just basically a pool of gigabyte pages that uh, we use. But um, uh, what uh, I'd like to try to upstream is the MemCTL itself. So basically an ability for guest to tell host how it how it like to uh, manage its uh, like parts of its memory, mm -hmm. so basically that the guest can hint host that uh, this part of my physical uh, memory is very hard. So please back it by by the huge pages. This is not very hard. Uh, it's okay to back it by 4K pages and save some memory memory and so on. Um, so that is just a separate driver. It's it's like the uh, it, it, it's it's just files uh, in the driver directory. Mm -hmm. So there are no changes to the MM layer with this. Uh, and then there is also a counterpart on the 
hypervisor, and that one depends on the hypervisor. So we, ha we, we wrote it for CrossVM. We have a prototype for cloud hypervisor. I mean, I could also add it to, for KMU, but the cloud hypervisor basically said that uh, they can take that agent before, the, before it's upstreamed to Linux. But um, I, yeah, since I, since I never upstreamed anything that like actually has like two different parts, like uh, one is in VMM, one is in Linux kernel. So I was just wondering what would, what would be the right path here to, to upstream this kind of feature. And uh, again, something that I'm worried about is that, um, like after upstreaming it, uh, the interface between uh, hyper like the VMM and kernel becomes somewhat um, uh, stabilized. So I'd like to make sure that uh, uh, we do not add any kind of security problems. So we can always. Um, Copy everyone, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> that, that, well, it looks like you're adding a bunch of hypercalls, so the most logical way is to post it to KVM folks. And then they uh, have the user space <laughs> counterpart uh, ready for review, but you don't want to merge user space part before you, you, before you have the KVM bits there. Th 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 that's the thing, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, so, and, and another thing is that uh, currently I I depend on uh, implementation, like so, so the, the actual communication between uh, the VMM and um, uh, guest goes through a, a so-called uh, hyper channel, which hasn't been upstreamed as well. It's also like a Google internal thing. So I, yeah, I, I'll need to figure out if we, if we can upstream that, or if we, I, if I should go back, uh, if I should, should go back and rewrite everything to use uh, Vertio. And if Vertio is as efficient for the synchronous calls, because from my understanding, that's not, and that's that's the main reason why we don't use that. So yeah, I think like like Vertio might be the way to go. Charging that Vertio balloon is the dumping ground for all of such. <laughs> My, my concern with Vertio that it's Q-based and for synchronous, uh, it's not really efficient. So, I think there are ways to make some synchronous calls, if I'm correct. I think there were some mechanisms. It's usually Q-based, but I think there are some paths around that. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, what I would suggest is what you look into first, and I think that has already been discussed at one point. So whenever we free a huge DB page in the guest, what you would simply do is you would like trigger free page reporting to clear that memory in the guest, uh, in the hypervisor, and then you simply mark the huge DB page as pre-zeroed. And you would essentially like get the benefit on each and every system that uses huge DB without any additional mem CTL whatsoever. <laughs> True, uh, but um, maybe that's not what you want to do. Yeah, but that's I mean, not you, exactly you can what I want get, to do, get it running yeah, on that, existing uh, systems. Yeah, but that, that, that's uh, yeah, that's a potential optimization. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm done. So, Thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, one more question. Yes. Um, what would be the uh, use case in the uh, OSS domain? Um, do we need to change any uh, memory user space mem uh, memory allocator like malloc? for this new uh, guest setup? Or do we need to uh, make modifications to the uh, those popular open source databases so that they can take advantage of this feature? Uh, so basically, uh, whoever wants to take advantage of this, they would need to send the commands to the memctl. And uh, that could be like uh, any kind of uh, user allocator. So. Uh, are you proposing everybody to um, to use uh, syscalls directly, to so use syscalls directly, or you think it would be better to have a uh, user space library to share for everybody? Okay, so with a single owner memory, uh, which uh, could be optimized for this environment, we could do the memctl calls right inside Linux kernel. Uh, and then uh, we wouldn't need to, to make changes to the uh, user applications except uh, telling them to map this single owner memory device and get like those optimized gigabyte pages right away. But uh, I think 
uh, more advanced applications that want to tell uh, that like this particular memory is very hard, please uh, back by transparent huge pages or some other hints, uh, they would still need to do the MMCTL calls. That's good. Thank you.